Diego Van, and welcome back to another Era Quinn Caledra Monster Mash. We are in the elimination round right now, where we have done our three round robins of randomly matched pairings of all these amazing monsters. We've shortlisted all of them into order, ranked them into order, based on their win-loss record and just how nasty they were to each other in those round robins. Now we're in the elimination match, and we're still finishing up the first round of the elimination match. We used a, a tournament scoring system we explained in episode 13. You can go back and see that if you want to see how we ranked everybody up. At this match, we've got the Ice Drake from Angmar and Treebeard. And yes, we have fun with our toys. So Treebeard, the beast from Fanghorn. We're going to go through the profiles for these two models. We're going to show you some custom dice we've got there. We're going to show you the models themselves. And then we're going to duke it all out in a battle report style format here. And we're going to have some fun. Um, thank you, kudos go first to Urban Mats for these incredible pieces of terrain that they do. We've got these fantastic mats from Urban Mats and some really nice looking ruins. These are medieval ruined townhomes from them. We've got the ruined chapel set there. We've got some other ruins you'll see in some other videos later. But here we go. There's the models and the dice and a bit of terrain to have some fun with. Heston, are you ready with the book? Absolutely. Let's take so, a look at the profiles. Here today we've got Treebeard. Uh, Six inch moving monster, fight eight, four plus shoot value with 18 inch strength 10 stones. Strength eight, defense eight, three attacks, three wounds, courage seven, uh, three might, six will, and three fate. So we could roll the terror tests for him, but he's guaranteed <laughs> to pass six times. So we technically don't need to roll yeah, for that. We'll roll him anyway, but yes, at courage seven, he's not fearless, but he's as fearless as you can get without the fearless special rule. And then that six will will make sure that he passes his courage checks. Treebeard is a beast, and there are very few things that have fight him in this game, even among the monsters in this monster mesh. Let's take a look. His war gear is, you know, big nasty treeness. His heroic actions, want to explain those? Uh, heroic strike, so he can increase his fight value by d6. This is crucial in the monster mash, as whoever has the higher fight value is likely to win the fight, and hence more likely to do damage. Uh, heroic strength, which you will likely not be using, it increases kind of the strength by d3. Starting at fight eight for heroic strike, starting at strength eight. So you, just in case Treebird ever really did need to be stronger, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> and then he has heroic defense, just yep. in case he's in some serious trouble. Now he uh, is a hero of legend, so he should have a couple of heroics, but it's kind of funny. He actually has very infrequent need for these heroics. But when he does need them, he's got those three might, and he's got some good heroics to call, so he is a real fighter. He's, yep. he's a beast. Uh, heroic defense is actually really good in point match games. It is. Even with the defense eight. It means that if you're, like, trapped and swarmed by a bunch of piercing striking axes, and there's a hero in there that's heroic striking, you can just call a heroic defense, and then they will need natural sixes to wound you, no matter what strength or modifiers they have to their dice. That is actually really good and really annoying. I used to play Fanghorn a lot, and one of the things that I constantly found is that even with Treebeard, eventually he would just get surrounded by so many and so many things so many times that he would run out of might, he'd fluff his dice once, and one fluff was enough, he'd be dead. So things like heroic defense really do matter. If you're going to have an expensive monster hero in a point match game, that really helps. The Merry and Pippin are not going to be part of the monster mash, but for 10 points, you can add Merry and Pippin, which rounds Treebeard off to an even 200 points and lets you drop them off on objectives. This is Mary and Pippin from the Fellowship. Because they're not part of the Monster Mash, we're going to leave that. You can read that on your own time. But just interesting that you can do that. And it adds lots to the other point match games. So special rules. Uh, terror. He's a monster. Of course, he has Terror. Uh, he's three stones, as I said before. Anyway. Uh, woodland Creature, because he's a tree. And Bludgeon, which is his special new brutal power attack, which cannot be used against monsters. But against infantry, it's brutal, because you essentially pick up the one guy and then smash him into his comrades. Which is kind of so funny, you actually. select one model in the fight, and then essentially, he's going to bludgeon each other person in the fight. And he's going to keep bludgeoning them, dealing strength 8 hits to them, and taking strength 8 hits itself, until it is slain, or until everyone else is slain. But if he does die, then you can just pick up another person... You and if they do survive, then they're knocked prone. And I think you can use a dead bludgeon and continue. Yeah, even if the bludgeon is slain, you can keep hammering away at everything around you. So if an ant gets trapped, this is an ant rule, it's not just for Treebird, but if an ant gets trapped and he wins the fight, he can pick up anything that has trapped him and bash it into everything else around him that has trapped him, including multi-wound models, until they are all dead. Which is kind of crazy. A lot of fun. Which is ridiculous 
ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know what? They're expensive models, so they need some expensive special rules. And yep, but there this... you go, top top tier stat line and a really crazy special rule to make some fun with it. Uh, it won't be used in this fight, though. That's right. He's not going to be picking up a dragon that way. So cave here we go. Here's the cave drake. Um, so, 8-inch movement, because it's faster for some reason. Uh, fight 6. It is a cave drake. Yep. It's, fight no, it's 6. A cave creature. Uh, it's good. Strength 7, defense 7. Four attacks. That was a massive change in the new rules. Uh, six wounds, courage four. That was also an improvement in the new rules. One might, three will, and one fate. Claws and teeth for war gear because it's a drake. Heroic actions are only heroic strength, and besides the three basic ones, so he cannot actually do a heroic strike, which is crucial because he is stuck at that fight six, which means that Treebeard will always have the higher fight value. Uh, the Drake does have Monstrous Charge, so he will get an extra attack on the charge, which is really good. That bumps him up to a mighty five attacks, and he will knock prone anything Strength 7 or less. Unfortunately, Not Treebeard, of course. Treebeard Strength 8, so that won't really help. But big deal that he's got five dice. He's not going to very often roll less than a six. Yep. Uh, mountain Dweller and Woodland Creature just make him very good in those terrains. Highly mobile model, this exactly. one Exactly. Uh, resistant to magic, which is good in the new rules, because it means that you can roll one free dice to resist magical powers every time they are cast on you, not limited once per turn. It is every single time a model casts on you. Uh, and it used to be that you had to use your own base will first. Now you get this resistant to magic benefit, even if you have a uh, will store left. It really doesn't matter. You can use it anyway. Yep. Protect the nest. Uh, well, he has terror. Uh, protect the nest is basically his eggs well her eggs and basically the eggs are placed at the start of the game and at any point if the drake is within three inches of the eggs it will count as fearless so it's a really nice ad considering that the drake is only courage four but you have to be within three inches of this tiny objective marker so in point match games it's not very helpful but in monster mash it's very helpful because you can just plant the eggs in the middle of the mash, and then they're just going to charge and fight in the middle. And We've got an effectively fearless Treebeard and a truly fearless Drake. They're not going to have any trouble with their curse tests in this match. So last rule, Gaping Maw. It is, yet again, you will see a common theme in the Monster Mash. There are a lot of brutal power attacks that these characters have that they will not actually be able to use. Against other monsters. Exactly. But Gaping Maw. fun in the point match games. Man-sized or smaller models, and basically it's just one strike. You roll a dice on a three-plus the model is swallowed whole and removed as a casualty. Fate rolls can be used, but if they fail... <laughs> voice crack. If they fail, this model is immediately slain. Which is kind of nasty. So yes, the gaping maw means that big honking mouth can just bite and swallow whole. Which is kind of crazy. So you wouldn't necessarily want to do that on fate models, especially for fate models that have might. But these two monsters have some really fun special rules. They're a lot of fun to play in point match games. I've used both in point match games and really enjoyed them. And I'm trying to get the tripod set in the right place. Here we go. So we're going to back these guys off six inches from each other so we can start with a 12 inch gap between them. We got the dice out of the way. Ronan, are you rolling for Treebeard or the Drake? Ah, uh, well, you like Treebeard a lot, don't you? I do. Treebeard is probably, you no, know, he's easily one of my favorite models in the game. So I will But the Drake the is Drake. probably one of my favorite evil models. These are both <laughs> mine. Oh, you know what? We didn't actually show off this stuff. Okay, so here we go. Treebeard is going to be rolling Chessex Vortex Green with a custom tree sapling logo we put on there. I love these dice. These are my favorite dice for wanderers or any sort of forest creatures. The Drake is going to be rolling, this is called Phantom Smoke, uh, the pattern from Chessex. It's a really nice swirly gray color with a custom dragon on the face of the six. We like to put custom logos on our sixes. And just because I sold all of those and don't have enough of them left, we're going to throw a couple of ice wolves in there as well. So this is the Gemini Purple Steel pattern from Chessex, and a really sharp color pattern. The uh, the Gemini dice are, let's see if we can refocus this, the Gemini dice are just a really, really attractive um, two-tone blends, Gemini meaning two-tone, and we got a custom Ice Wolf logo on that one. So we've got Smoke Dragons and Ice Wolves, two tree saplings. This tree beard was a bit of a custom conversion. We had some fun, you know, bending his legs and stuff around, putting a nice base under him. He's not overly converted, but he's fun, and he's squishing an orc because that's what you do when you're a tree beard. You definitely want to stomp out some Isengard along the way, so he's going to stomp around and squish some work on the way. Here's my Ice Drake. Had a lot of fun painting this guy up. The base is nothing overly abnormal. It's just a bunch of rock on there that's dry brushed up with some snow. Before they had the rule about the eggs, I actually glued the eggs on there, and I had the little baby Drake ready to go too, but I thought it was fun to play with, so I kept it off. 
Now I kind of regret doing that, but we made a cast of them. This is not properly painted yet, but it's almost ready. Um, so we've got some eggs that we're going to keep in the middle of the field for this drake. Otherwise, the egg is just on the base. For ice theme, I just went with a sort of purple underbelly. Excuse me, yes, there's metal under there to help this thing travel well. We, we do that with all our models, by the way. We have metal washers under our models and magnet sheets in our travel trays, and they just they stick and they don't slide. It's fantastic. Um, so I went for ice theme, purple underbelly, um, some blue washes on there, and then just dry brushed him up with some icy tones so he's nice and frosty. And then if we back him back up, I just messed you up, didn't I, Ron? Yeah. So if we put the eggs in the middle, we've got six inches go. off either direction of the eggs. And they're just going to go in front, like that. You know what? They're not nearly as pretty. Let's put them in the back. Because <laughs> they're not done, sure. and I'm self-conscious. All, right, All right, so here we go. Treebeard and the Drake, ready to run. Let's get that out of the way. Priority. Goes to Treebeard. Treebeard is going to take one cheap shot. He's going to stoop and throw a strength 10 stone. Yep. And they will be in range of each other shortly. And the Drake is going to run up less than his 8 inches, just to stay out of charge range of Treebeard but he can charge next turn if he oh, so yes. chooses. So that settles it for the Drake. All right, so this Treebeard has a stone. He needs a four to hit. Here we go. He gets the hit. This is a strength 10 hit against a defense seven Drake, needing a three to wound. That's one wound on the Drake. And the Drake is just going to take it. He's got seven wounds, so he can afford Six to lose wounds. one. Six So he's going. He's down to five. The Dragon's the one with seven wounds. I'm uh, backwards. That's right. Okay. Priority. Here we go. Not to Treebeard this time. It is the Drake he's going to charge, he, right? Uh, he is within three inches of the eggs, so he does count as fearless right, for this turn. And just... So he's just going to charge in. Bang. Here we go. We are engaged. Treebeard on the Drake. Headlock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these models can be a pain to line up sometimes, but they're just beautiful and we love them. Okay, so there we go. We're in base contact. We've got three of Treebeard to five from Drake because he did get his charge. Let's roll some dice. Treebeard does a firefight value. Yes, he does. I do get a six. So does Treebeard. So Treebeard six takes it. Drake is knocked back one inch. This is strength eight against defense seven, needing fours to wound. And needing a lot of wounds yet. So there's two wounds. And the Drake will take them both. And this is a one. There is no reason to spend three might on that. That's not happening. So Treebeard has done so far three wounds. The Drake has three left. Yep. Here we go. Priority. Does not go to Treebeard. Drake takes it. Still within three inches of the eggs. Yep, still fearless. Bang. Bang. Here we go again. Elbow check. Okay. Three of Treebeard, five of the Drake. There's a six. Treebeard fluffs. Not a good roll. But that's okay. He's going to, you know what? The Drake is defense, sorry, a strength seven. Treebeard is defense eight. So the, tree, the Drake needs fives to wound. He's got five dice to get them. We have. Um, Six, three wounds and three might and three fate on Treebeard. So we're going to take a chance and let the Drake do one round of damage. We'll see what happens. Okay. Looking for fives. Oh. Look at all those fours. Ow! That hurts. Drake has some might. Nope. Not worth it for that, I don't think. Only one might point. So Treebeard is back an inch. Priority. No! So... Treebeard. Is he going to burn it this time? I think he's not going to burn his might. He's still within three inches? Yep. Just. All right. Drake runs. Three on five. Again. Here we go. There's a six. There's a five. Treebeard will might this six. We might this five into a six so that he wins. Treebeard has two might left now. You don't have to go that far. All right. Needing three wounds to finish this Drake off. There's one, two, and he has two might left to turn this one into a three. Sorry, to turn this into another wound. Um, and I have to do that before the drake uses its fate. Is it worth two might to do that? No, we're going to save it. What do it, do it. Oh, what if anything goes wrong, then he's going to want to have two might left for the next round. Nah, just do it. you got a 50% cent, 50 chance of not doing that, not dying. I, You know what? Rona would be aggressive and do it. I wouldn't. So... I'm going to say I did not spend the two might. Let's see what happens okay. here. So that's two more wounds on the Drake. He's got one wound left and uh, one fate. I am fate. actually going to spend the fate. Spends the fate, passes the fate. So I'm glad that I didn't waste the might on that. So All we're right. down to one wound left on this Drake, no fate, and uh, no might. Two wounds left on the Drake. Two wounds left? Uh, you did two wounds, took one, saved one with fate. This is... Oh, you're right. Yes, okay. There we go. Priority. Oh, 
That's a one. Trevor gets the priority. I am going to heroic move. Bang. How are you? Hmm. That's going to burn his might. He has no might, no fate, and two wounds left on him. I'm going to let you, and I'm going to take my might for other things. Still fearless. Enjoy the fearless while it lasts. There we go. Three on five. Gets the six. Reaver gets the six. Yeah. Needing two wounds. Looking for fours. Oh! But because I have two might left, ah, and because you great. have no fate, I'm going to might both of these. So that three becomes a four. Where's my four? There's the four. That's a wound. And this three becomes a four. That's a wound. That drake is toast. <laughs> All right, Here. thanks so much for watching. Treebeard is a fighter. And my Govana, we will see you again soon with the next Monster Mash on Eric Quinn Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.